talk about data collected about the effect of vitamin D on vitamin D3 on sleep. Uh, this started at the Ancestral Health Symposium last year. I, I talked to Tara Grant, and um, she blogged about it. Uh, the strange little man is me. <laughs> I recommend to her that she get at least one full hour of sunshine in the morning. And she uh, realized she was taking a vitamin D at night, and it's you know connected with sunshine. Vitamin D sunshine causes vitamin D3 synthesis. So she wondered if taking vitamin D in the evening was like getting sunlight in the evening. So she resolved to change to take her vitamin D3 in the morning, only in the morning. And all of a sudden her sleep got much better, much, much better, and it stayed better ever since. So that was like you know six months ago. But no doubt this cause and effect. And I blogged about this, and people started telling me that they tried it too, and they got the same results. So here are three stories about um, vitamin D in the evening being bad. But then there are more stories about vitamin D in the morning being good. So this person started taking vitamin D in the morning and had a, you know, a bunch of good things happen. I have, a, here's another one. Vitamin, taking vitamin D early in the morning has been a game changer for me, blah, blah, blah. Um, the upgrade of mood and energy has been staggering. Um, I collected uh, about 25 of these stories. Now, a few of them were negative. I, I didn't discriminate. Um, but most of the stories are very positive, almost all. Just a few were, few were not got results. So anyway, there's a lot, there's a huge amount of support. You know, if, if 20, 25 stories is a huge amount. <laughs> anyway, none, none of these people um, uh, produced a graph or, or obviously collected data, but I did. And so I'm going to show you my data. Um, I didn't post the data, so they, these people weren't influenced by what I found. And I found that certain dosages worked and certain dosages didn't work. And it turns out the dosages these people are using fall in the range that I found that did work. So there's 5,000. I found that, according to my data, 5,000 should have worked. So there is a consistency between what I found and they didn't know about and what they, what they found. Anyway, lots of people tried it and um, this is the most interesting. Um, they didn't find an improvement in their sleep until they upped the dosage to 4,000. Um, that's, that's exactly what I found. They didn't know that. And I don't know it either. Um, so anyway, this is what I did. I took it at early in the morning. And starting at four, when I got up to 4,000 international units, my sleep improved. And I had more energy in the afternoon. I'm going to show you some details now. Um, I took the I took different dosages for a different length of time, roughly a week for each each dosage. So I had a bunch of baseline data, which is the none, and then I took for different lengths of time. And then later I, I, I switched the time of day from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. But I was leaving to go back to California, so it's only four days. Anyway, this is the most interesting results. I measured how rested I was, and I, I had a scale that I used a lot. Um, where 100% is fully rested and you know 0% is not rested at all. You know you may be skeptical, but the important point here is that there was no effect. There was no difference. There was no effect in 2000, but when I got to 4000, there was a clear effect. It was, it was noticeable the very first day. I felt differently that morning after I started the 4000, but not with the 2000. Then the effect continued. Now, did I have more energy in the afternoon? Well, did I need shorter naps? Um, not so obvious. It's not so obvious that the naps are shorter here than, than here. Maybe, but it's not obvious. Now, this is the most interesting, one of the most interesting things. I would wake up too early, and then I would fall back asleep later. So before the vitamin D, 30% of the time that would happen. But after I started taking the vitamin D, it went way up. All these numbers are higher than 30. And then when I switched to 9 a.m., it, it seemed to go away. But the, the effects weren't all positive. It, you know, I don't like waking up too early. So th these are bad effects here. This, this was better before the vitamin D. But this is a, this is a, shows that there's an effect on sleep. Um, now, I woke up more rested with the vitamin D. But my, I wasn't sleeping more. There's no big change here. This is total sleep duration. Maybe, maybe at 9 a.m. it was working better because I was sleeping late, but there's too much noise here to be sure. 
The main point here is that I was making them more rested with the same amount of sleep. And that's just the time of day I got up. Uh, this was 3.30. <laughs> anyway, it didn't change that. But then when I went to 9 a.m., it, it changed. It probably changed. This is probably a reliable difference. So the time of day matters based on a little bit of data. See, these, the, going from nothing to something, anyway. <laughs> what did I learn? Okay, first of all, the improvement was easy to see in the data on the rest of the, the, the energy The improvement in energy in the afternoon, although I felt it, was not easy to see. And there was a sunlight effect it was easy to see, which is that it increased in falling back to sleep. It did affect my sleep, not, all, not always in positive ways. This is a negative thing. These are the broad implications. Um, millions of dollars have been spent on vitamin D research, but this, is, this effect has never been found. There's never been a study that controlled vitamin D that controlled the time of day that people take it. And so here's the value of personal science that a time of day effect was found that cost almost nothing. Evidence for it, at least. So people have questions and stuff? Yeah. You don't, you don't have a video of that. I do have a zero, but that wasn't it wasn't good for this I didn't like the data it produced. I didn't use it. Yeah. I'm not sure if I understood <coughs> what, what what was the number that went up that was uh, a negative or the result you didn't want or the numbers I would wake up too early in the morning. That means I would wake up and then fall back asleep later. And I woke up really I woke up more rested, but I strangely enough I, I, I fell back asleep like three hours later. Yeah. Are your vitamin D levels uh, I don't know, but um, I would get I would I would get lots of sunlight every day. I would every single day before this experiment started during the base. Actually, during the whole experiment, I didn't change. I didn't change my sunlight exposure during the whole experiment. I get a lot more. I get, every morning I would go out on my sun deck and get a couple of hours. How are you measuring how rested you felt? I use a scale which goes from zero to hundred. It's percent rested, and I've been using this for many years maybe, you know, eight, ten years, and uh, I can do it, where I, different feelings correspond to different numbers, and um, I, there's a certain feeling which is like 90% rested, where zero is, you, you feel incredibly tired, like your sleep was not restorative at all, and 100% is like totally restorative, and there's been a few times I've experienced that, so that's the scale I use. So when were you asking yourself that, multiple times per day? No, it's not like, wake up. Uh, yeah. So there are two separate effects of sunlight exposure on uh, the body. One is an effect through the eyes, and that changes the circadian rhythm. The other is the vitamin D production. Uh, and they're maximized at very different times during the day. Vitamin D production doesn't happen except uh, within a couple of hours of noon, whereas the uh, circadian rhythm thing only happens if it's exposure early in the morning or very late at night. So, uh, can you explain exactly when your uh, somatic exposure was? Um, when the sun came up, which was like around 7 a.m. Okay, until 9 a.m. Okay. So, it would be low vitamin D infection time, but I, um, I, and yeah. I found this change. I took a multivitamin pill, but that's a small amount of vitamin D. I didn't have my vitamin D levels measured. A question really for the audience. Um, I have read that you could only absorb about a thousand IU of vitamin D in your digestive system in a day, and this suggests otherwise. Um, does anybody it's actually? Through uh, uh, normal diet, yes. Uh, but that's because there isn't that much vitamin D in your normal diet. It's not limited by your intestine. It's limited by what's available. And I can probably prove with my D levels that I have had taken, or I'm sure many other people. And seeing that increasing in past 5,000 still made a difference. Other questions? Yeah? Were you getting any physical exercise during these experiments? And also, were you drinking alcohol at all during these experiments? <laughs> yeah, I drink a lot of alcohol and I, get, I walk about an hour a day and I do other exercises. 
Yeah. Have you thought about placebo control in your test? Well, it's better than placebo control with a dosage thing. So I it's not high on my list, no. I, I really wouldn't believe the data unless you did. Well, I, I come from a world where dosage controls are better than placebo controls. There's no reason why you couldn't do both. Well, when you've done a good experiment, you don't try to don't retreat to a, a worse experiment. Oh, you just have an effect. You don't know what that's your baseline. You need to get it to the next Oh, yeah? Why is that? Because <coughs> the, the doses that you took early on were still active several weeks later. Well, there was a sudden change in the data when I made a ch sudden change in the dosage. Right. Well, so that does suggest cause and effect. Um, not necessarily. Uh, it could just be that those sudden changes were not statistically significant. No, they were. Anyway, you have a question? What? Question over here? Yeah, were you aware of what dose you were taking, or did you kind of do it? Yeah, I was aware of what dose I was taking, but I had no idea what dose would be effective. <coughs> I, I, as I said it, it, during the talk, it, it turned out for me, as you saw, that 4, 000, above 4,000 was what we required. And you could see the same thing in the, all those stories, if you looked at all the stories I posted. Those are independent sources of data of, of what? I don't think it, I don't think before this was all collected, anyone had a good reason to pick a dose. Lots of lots of vitamin D experiments have been done with 2,000 IU. Lots of people out there believe 2,000 IU is a good dose, and they they're basing their you know professional reputation on on that fact. Uh, perhaps a more progressive question: Have you considered um, publishing the protocol so you can get other folks to report on it? Publishing the protocol. Um, well, I did blog about it. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, guess, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, in kind of a quantified self, you know, collaborative fashion, see if other folks will take up, take up the same rigor to get, get some more data. Um, yeah, Gina Mara is doing some kind of study about it, and um, lots of people have done that. I agree. I mean, it, it would be it would be more it would be helpful to, for more people to yeah, collect no, I mean, deep data. I agree. Totally. Totally. And I mean, I. When I when I when people write into me or, or tell me that it worked, obviously there's selective selection possibilities that people that for it didn't work didn't tell me. Sure, absolutely. Um, I, but I did. I there were there were a lot of people who reported stuff like this, and I'm I'm not saying this proves it. Of course, the, I'm sure of course the experiment can be done better, but um, I don't think it's a question of placebo controls. I don't think that's the weakness here. No. Um, What's the weakness? Okay. Yeah. What's the weakness? Oh, uh, people are different. People have different vitamin D levels. Um, I, um, I can't, I can't conceive that it was something else that changed at the very same time I changed the vitamin D. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sure it's causing effect here, but um, the whole context of my diet maybe depends on that. So why don't we move on to the next speaker, and we'll, we'll have plenty of time after.